Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at whether or not you should repot your indoor plants going into the fall winter season. This is kind of a highly debated topic because some people believe you should and others think it should all be done in the spring. But I'm here to give you a bit of a guide on exactly what you should be doing based on your circumstance. So the best way to look at this, we're going to be looking at it from the perspective of whether or not these plants go dormant and if that can can cause root rot if we repot the plant and then we will also be looking at whether or not we should go up a size in pot or if we should go down a size in pot if we are winter planting as well as LECA versus soil versus sphagnum which is the best fit for you and then what to actually repot into so plastic plastic or terracotta because if you've been on this channel long enough you already know I'm a firm believer in the fact that your pot is a part of your soil system so without further ado let's jump straight into it the first way to look at this is actually determining whether or not our houseplants go dormant in the winter and this is a highly debated topic now some do go dormant per se but it's more so a slowdown in growth Similar to what bears do, people think that bears simply go into their little hiding holes, they go to sleep and they don't wake up again. That's not the case. Bears and mammals continually wake up through the winter season and they aren't just officially asleep for that entire period of time. The same thing goes with plants, both indoors and out. They aren't fully asleep. They've just simply slowed down when it comes to growth. And that's what's happening with our houseplants. But what triggers that onset of a dormancy? One thing I do not advise doing is potting up in the fall or winter months, mostly because we are still having some pretty heavy utilization in the actual water usage of the plant. However, this is going to change and you may not have noticed it yet, but I promise you in about two months, your water utilization is going to drastically decrease. And I find that a lot of plant people will pot up now because they think, well, it's still outside time, so I can't make that much of a mess if I just quickly repot this outdoors. However, when we pot up, we do run the risk of having too much water holding capacity and then overwatering and causing root rot. So I urge you to leave your plants in the pots that are in, especially when you're choosing to pot up. Trust me, your plants will be fine in the containers they're in. If anything, they should maybe be going down a container. Do not worry about root boundness. I mean, I did a video on root bound and whether or not it's a thing. Ultimately, the factors you need to control when you are considering whether or not a plant is root bound is supplying the nutrients it needs and the water it needs. If you supply those two things, you can have a plant in a very tiny container. If you have one takeaway from this entire video and something that I ultimately do want you to try and that is completely soil science, plant science approved, is use undersized pots and I just want to drive this point home to you this syngonium here behind me a beautiful believe pink butterfly you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below but this is a big plant so it's huge it's ultimately very large and so a lot of people would have repotted this multiple times at this point but he's actually still in his original nursery pot and he's been inside of this pot now for three years and i have not yet repotted him so what this is telling me is that plant roots you know them being a little bit squashed isn't a big deal especially when we're talking about plants within this aeroid family and so as long as we're supplying the nutrient needs of the plant we can have a large beautiful plant so don't stress your plants out by potting up potting up potting up every year you can keep them in nice snug conditions and quite frankly a lot of the time my plants that thrive and do the best are the plants that i do not repot and i leave in the original containers for many many years pink syngonium here i've had for such a long time and this is how big his pot is that's it that's all so he's 
he's ginormous, he's huge, and he's happy, and he's got lots of new greenery coming in. Um, he's got his beautiful pinks, he's got his beautiful greens, so he's a happy, healthy plant. All I need to care about in this scenario with this plant is that I'm providing it the nutrients it needs based on its small soil condition and its small reserves it has, then also providing it the volume of water it needs. And the reason why it's thriving so well is because I've almost bonzified it in a way where I'm not necessarily keeping the plant small, but I am so obsessed with making sure this plant is watered and uh, given nutrients in a way that benefits it. So therefore, ultimately, it's doing very, very well. However, if we aren't able to supplement the lighting, the heat, and the moisture, then it is time to consider potting down, or at a minimum, changing that potting medium or the container itself, which is the best part of this entire video. So let's jump into what I mean by that. So first things first, the actual volume of soil or soilless medium within your containers. This is huge, you guys. Your plants will be underutilizing the volume of water that they were using compared to these summer months. And therefore, we need to reduce the water holding capacity and ultimately the volume of medium within those containers to help reduce that water intake. The exception to this obviously is going to be a hydroponic system or a LECA system, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, when it comes to reducing the volume, we are literally just reducing the water holding capacity. So this is going to be very contrary for some people, but it's going to work, especially if you are intuitive and if you actually follow what your plant needs. So if you aren't just a blanket waterer that waters XYZ plants on XYZ day. So what I mean by intuitive is if you are able to monitor your moisture levels within your soil system, meaning you are able to detect when the plant needs soil based on the soil moisture, which is how you should be watering and how you should aim to water going forward. If you are using a watering schedule, drop it. Try to sense when the plant needs water, either with your finger, with a Q-tip, poking it into the soil, pulling it back out, trying to feel or sense some moisture on the actual Q-tip itself. The method here is reducing the soil volume. So just because you have a large container does not mean you need to fill said large container up to the very top. And there's two ways to do this. The first way is actually putting rocks in the bottom of the pot and then putting soil on top. And this is controversial because you can have something called a perched water table. I did two entire videos on this, so be sure to check those videos out. I will leave the links for those down in the comments below. But in the perched water table system, you do run the risk of root rot if your plant's roots are within that soil system area. So that may not work in all cases, especially if you have a short pot, such as the case with this tiger toot philodendron I have here. Now, if you have a small pot, you don't wanna do the rocks in the bottom, but you need to reduce the volume of soil because you know that plant is going to reduce its water usage and it just its overall growth over the winter season, then not necessarily downsizing the pot, but changing how much soil volume is inside the pot is key. So in this case, I have a tiger tooth philodendron, and as you can see, I have very little sphagnum moss in the bottom. So the pot is only full three quarters of the way. However, this is going to help me manage the actual soil and soil usage much, much better. So you can do this with sphagnum and you can also do this with normal soil. So I do grow quite a few plants in sphagnum moss. I don't have any issues with it. I especially do this with plants that I need to really monitor and I'm looking for tons of airflow, I will do straight sphagnum moss and that is what this guy is planted in. But again, he's only three quarters full. So I have less volume, less water holding capacity, and therefore less likelihood of overwatering due to an underutilization of the water contained within this pot, especially during the winter months. Now, if I need to pot up in the spring, I can do that 
or you can simply with a lot of indoor tropical plants because we have a rhizome or we have a basic stem we just have to actually pile more sphagnum moss on top especially in this case wood chips or bark on top and therefore you have ultimately already increased your water holding capacity and it is a really quick way to pivot your plant conversely if i overfilled this with too much volume holding capacity all i have to do if i'm noticing my water utilization is decreasing especially in the case of a sphagnum moss is i simply just have to remove a little bit of excess and reduce the height of the actual soil profile within this pot, therefore ultimately reducing the total holding volume capability of the pot itself. So kind of cool um, and something that you can definitely try out. You guys let me know in the comments down below if you've ever tried this hack. I use it all the time. So here is a, another example of a plant that is a little bit more on the pricey side, especially where I'm located is a Hoya grandifolia. And so again, I have it in a solo cup that's inside of a cover pot and I have it in a semi-hydroponic system. I'm not using Leca and I'm not using Latrusa Pond. I am, again, I'm using sphagnum moss in this case, and I don't have the cup all the way full to the top. I actually only have a little bit at the bottom filled, and as I need, I can either remove that volume of sphagnum moss if my water utilization is under, or I can add sphagnum moss to the system if my water utilization is up come springtime. I, I try to avoid repotting whenever possible. So if I can have a dynamic moldable pot system, such as what we see here, this is going to work in my benefit. The other bonus to repotting into solo cups or into orchid pots that are clear is I can see my root activity. So you can actually see on the pot itself what my roots are doing. Are they white and furry and healthy or are they brown, moldy and mushy? And again, from there, I can pivot either through maybe drilling holes in the sides of the pot, removing some volume holding cap capacity, or if I'm noticing a ton of roots and maybe an overutilization of water, I just simply have to add some more sphagnum moss into the system. The third, third thing is going to be LECA versus soil. And I'm just going to say this straight out. If you're debating changing from soil to Latrusa Pond or Leca, just avoid it right now. You don't want to be changing mediums that drastically. If you're going from a coconut choir to a peat moss, fine. If you're going from a peat moss to a peat moss cocoa bark type scenario, fine. But something drastic like a soil based medium to a LECA based medium is much too drastic at this time of year and you may cause more damage than good. So try to avoid drastic changes. We want to avoid transplant shock right now because we won't know the plant is ultimately okay, especially if we don't have new root biomass coming out, we don't have new leaf biomass coming out. So reserve those drastic changes for the spring months or at least until you notice you have some active growth on the plant. If you're noticing active growth, such as nice fleshy new leaves or new leaves arising, then it could be time to choose to do this. And if you ultimately are able to change the environment of the plant to an ideal environment that doesn't allow it to trigger a dormancy, then this may work for you. This is my final and last tip, but my favorite tip of all, and that is terracotta versus plastic. Now I use both versions, however, I like to think of the actual container as part of the soil system. And the reason for that is because some containers allow for more air penetration or gas exchange when compared to the other. And so terracotta is a type of pot that allows for a lot of gas exchange and therefore ultimately can save you from overwatering 
and will allow you to keep your plants in that larger sized, prettier pot without reducing the size. Whereas if you stick with a plastic, then you may need to pot down in size because you don't have that added air exchange and you don't have that extra evapotranspiration, which ultimately can cause an anaerobic environment. And as we know, based on the information we've learned off this channel to date, Root rot is an anaerobic bacteria and we want to avoid this whenever possible. If you're in an area that is very, very cold, you have low humidity and you don't have a lot of grow lights at your disposal, then I do highly suggest using this method for your repot in the fall. And that would be an undersized terracotta pot with very porous material. And in this case, it is mostly orchid bark mixed with some peat moss uh, based stuff. So I do have the direction for this potting soil medium over on the website but all I have is a terracotta pot and I have those wood chips remember terracotta pots it's a part of your soil system it is a clay based material however it is very porous meaning it allows for a lot of air exchange to happen so when the case of this plant which is um, a variegated Hoya compacta or a variegated Hindu rope these plants aren't cheap and so and I want to get the best growth possible. So I'm going to baby this plant more. I'm going to put more energy and focus into this plant. And because of that, I already know I'm going to be paying attention to this plant much more often. So if I have a very porous potting medium combined with a very porous container on the outside, ultimately I'm going to get the best growth out of this plant because I'm going to be watching it like a hawk and I am going to be watering it nearly every single week. So this is another option of what you can do and some of you are going to argue that this is undersized. Um, I say it's not, but again, this is another option for those of you that are overwaterers or you live in conditions where you know ultimately your your growth of your plants is going to be heavily reduced. Well, and there you guys have it, the complete guide to repotting those house plants indoors in the fall winter months. The main takeaway is that we don't want to pot up whenever possible because we don't want to run the risk of underwater utilization in the winter months. The exception to this is if we use a sphagnum moss, for example, where we can put the plants in the larger pot with the same volume of said soil or soilless medium it had before, and then simply top up as needed if we're noticing an overutilization of moisture. Now, with that being said, if we are able to supply the moisture and the nutrients that that plant needs, despite being in a smaller pot, it will be just fine until the spring months hit. Always consider what the outside of the pot looks like, whether it's plastic, glazed terracotta, or terracotta, because this will also help you determine what medium you're putting in. And as always, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and you absolutely have to let me know if you've heard any of these tips in other videos before. I try to make this as original as possible. I think I did a good job. I not totally sure. Be sure to share if I did do a good job and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.